all over the place, you will see Christians going through a lot all over the world. People who are suffering most are Christians. People who are always the victims of whatever thing that happens in the world are mostly Christians. But this is why. Sometimes people look at the whole Christians, the whole Christianity, as if people who don't even know what they are doing. Christians today appear to be people who don't even have mind. They are told to do all kinds of things. Even some of them are eating glasses, glass, weed. Some are even drinking some kind of things which are even poisonous because of what pastors are telling them. There are some things which Christian pastors are not telling you. That is why you see Christians going through those sufferings. Christians are really suffering. Everywhere in the world, even when they are found in Europe, in China, in the United States, in Canada, wherever Christians are found, even where there are a lot of money, where everybody is enjoying money, Christians there are suffering. Even when you find Christians in Israel, they are just at some corner suffering. But that is not Christianity. You can say, or nobody can say, that God sent his son to die for a people who believe in him. And these people don't even see any advantage of the suffering of Christ for them. Meanwhile, when you read the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. I know you believe in the Bible. That's why I'm reading there for you. That we, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he was rich. But for our sakes, he became poor. He became poor. That we, through his poverty, might be made rich. John 1, 16. John chapter 1, verse 16. is saying that of his fullness we all have received. And this person whose fullness we all, everyone who is a Christian, has received. Because that verse 12 for John chapter 1 is saying that as many as receive him, he came into the world, the world did not even know him. The world, he was the one who created the world. From verse 10, John chapter 1. But the world did not know him nor receive him. Then he's saying that as many who receive him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Even those who believe in his name. Not even receiving him, but those who even believe in his name. Even believe in his name. They have received that power. And verse 16, that John chapter 1, of his fullness, we all have received. But do you know the person whose fullness you and I have received? Psalm 24 David spoke about it, man, in Psalm 24. He said, The earth and the fullness thereof, the world and everything in them, is for him. Everything. It's for this man. Then that sons of God who he gave power to those who receive him to have to become, to become that sons of God, whether you are a man or woman, you have become a John here with him because you have become, he gave you that power to become son of God like him. You have become John here with him. Romans 8, 17. Verse 29. He has become the firstborn among you. He came as the only begotten son. Now tell me, somebody who has received the same glory, the same stature, all the fullness, the same power, might, of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was the Lord in the Old Testament. Jesus is the Lord until today. He's the Lord. Who have received all the fullness of the Lord. All. In fact, 
Ephesians 3 19 is saying that you know this love of Christ, which passes knowledge, because Christ has given all his fullness to you by this love. Know this love that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. Why? Because Jesus Christ himself is God. He's the son of God. So he's God. So you have all the fullness of God. Think about that. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 12, anyone who believes in me, that's anyone who receives me, what I do, he can also do, and greater than that has become. I'm going to the Father. It's not saying when he returns, then you will be like him. He said, in his absence right now, as he is not here on earth, he's gone to the Father. Whatever he can do, you can also do and even do greater. That's what Jesus said. But let's come back now to ourselves. See our Christian life. You see, the whole reason, the whole reason why we are like that is that Christian pastors are not telling us the truth. You see, Christian pastors will come to church and want the members to serve him, give him money, provide everything that he and his family or she and her family need. Because they said they are the pastors. They are the prophets, they are the religious, and you will be tired you that you, you refuse to give them money. They will curse you. So when they talk about the blessings of God, they are talking about you giving to them. And then they will come and pray for you that, oh, my God will give you everything you need. My God will bless you. They can quote Apostle Paul. Philippians 4, from verse 19. My God will supply all your needs according to his glory, his wealth, according to his greatness, according to... So he will give you everything according to that. And deceiving you. Saying that God only give them the money, if you bless them, then they are God. So they only have God, but you don't have God. Somebody who say, is saying that you have received Christ, and the word of God is saying that those who receive him have received the power to become the son of God. You are serving somebody, giving money to somebody for God to bless you. Are you thinking? Are you thinking that the son of God don't need anything from any person? Why? Because he's the healer of God. John here with Christ. Do you think about this? Do you read the Bible? Do you understand it this way? So some people continue to rob you. Why won't you suffer? This world, if you lose just one hour of your time, you are going to be behind in a competition. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, 12. He said, from the days of John the Baptist to today, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. So in this world, whether you like it or not, there is competition. Now, if somebody deceives you, you, you have everything. There is nothing lacking. Because Jesus did not come to put money in your hand. What he put into your hand is the power of the Son of God. That whatever he can do, you can also do. He said, if you have faith in God, anything you say, if you don't doubt it, you get it. Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24. So when you pray, believe your own prayer. The prayer you are praying, believe it. And you will have it. Why? Because the power of God is in you. Ephesians 3, 20. He said, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you Acts or think according to the power working in you as the Son of God. As the Son of God, the power of God your Father draws in you. God your Father draws in you by, your, by His Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 10, 
The words I speak is my Father in me who does the work. That is the power of God in the Son of God. So if you allow anybody to deceive you and you just waste your time, of course you'll be cut off in competition because Jesus is saying that the world is in a huge competition whether you like it or not because you can have everything of God but if you are deceived even spiritual robbers this is what I call some creatures who are very wicked and greedy they will even steal even your own life they will kidnap you and sell you and you still be mentioning the name of Jesus because you have been deceived. They will rob you. Everything you have, you continue to serve them. And as you are serving them, they are making you poor. Can you imagine? There's somebody who is working. And even your salary, they don't want to give you. And not that the person who is employed, who employ you is not wealthy, he doesn't have money. He's making millions and billions of profits. That is how wicked and greedy the world is. So imagine that God has given you all this power and then you just fool around. You let everybody fool you because you say you go to church. And it is not the world who is fooling you. It is your own pastors, your own churches. That is the most painful part of it. Your own people who are mentioning the name of Jesus and saying that they are coming to preach Jesus to you. They are the one who is robbing you of the knowledge, the truth, robbing you of your energy, robbing you of your money, the money you need to invest in this world, in this competitive world. Whether you like it or not, this world is competition. Why is it competition? You see, God, who is your father, created all, whether they are devils or whoever. He created everything. And he's responsible to provide everything generously. He put it in the earth. For example, rainfall doesn't fall only to sons of God. It falls for everybody in the world. Sunshine to give life. Life in human being, energy to wake up and live in the morning. God, it is, God is obliged to supply. So the thing come to the earth. He said he is pour rain to the earth so that it, the, red, the earth will grow. It germinates. They have been burdened. He will give rain. He will give sunshine. He has to provide all these things for the world to have what they need. He put gold under the ground the gold is on the ground it's not in heaven you put everything under the ground money everything fruit whatever you need to give you life you provide lake sea and everything so it is here on earth that everything is found you are created to have a physical life and a material life whether you like it or not you need material substance or a fiscal substance before you can live in this world. Because this world is not a spiritual place. It's a place where flesh are found. And you are found in their flesh. Even though you are created spirits, you are living in a physical body. And you need material things to survive. So if anybody tries to deceive you, he wastes the person wasted, wastes everything in you. You can't use it. You would think that's God who is doing that. They'll come and pray as if they are blessing you. But these are hypocrites. They come everywhere to preach to you about the kingdom of God. But what they are preaching to you has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, woe unto them. By you to who they are deceiving, you're also going to be destroyed. Matthew chapter 23, from verse 13 to 15, Jesus said to a group of scribes and Pharisees, Oh, unto hypocrites, 
you hinder people from entering the kingdom of God. You will not go in yourself, but you don't want people to go in. By pretense, you make long prayers, but you are devouring widows' hopes. You go everywhere to preach to everybody, but the disciples you form by your kind of preaching, you make them twofold children of hell than yourself. So there's a price to pay for following false doctrines. You become twice children of hell. There's somebody who is living in the earth, on earth, you are not yet in hell, but the suffering you are going through is even more than people in hell because you are twice children of hell. That's what they are making you. They come out and say that God is going to do everything for you. God is not going to do everything for you if you believe in Christ because what believing in Christ means is that you have become the son of God. You have every power of God in you to bring things up yourself. The son of God is the creator of all things. Jesus Christ created all things and Jesus has made you like himself. You are the son of God like him. Ephesians 3 9 says, God created all things by Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus is saying that my father is in me. What I say, my father does it. I created all things that my father wants to be. If you also believe in me, you have become like me. I'm just a firstborn among you. You can do everything that I do because you have become like me. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. He has sanctified us to be like himself. So he's not ashamed to call us braided. So if you are ever thinking that God is going to do something for you from heaven, you are deceiving yourself. Everything is in you to bring out. God is even looking up to you to develop this world, to bring joy and prosperity to people. Isaiah chapter 61, from verse 1 to 8, talk about who are going to receive the gospel. They, he said, they will repair old ways. They will build back cities, desolate cities. Verse 4, Isaiah 61. That's the place where Jesus read in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. So the Christian is the one who is supposed to bring God prosperity and God's will. He's the one who is supposed to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is ruling in heaven. And God wants his sons to bring these same conditions on earth here. By dealing with devils, cast them down, spit them, slay them, so that God's will will rule here. So Jesus said, when you pray, say this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as in heaven. And it's a charge to you. It's not just a prayer, it's a charge to you. Jesus said, if I cast these devils, then the kingdom of God is come. Matthew 12, 28. So you have the spirit of God to do everything. But if people are teaching you some things wrong, you will still be following miracles. You think God should work for you as he was working in the Old Testament. Those days, they didn't have that power of God in him as you. Nobody was the son of God then. The prophets who were working like Moses, Elijah, and Elisha, and those things, they didn't have that statue as sons of God. They don't have that power as sons of God. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 11, that the, the least, the kingdom of God is greater than even Elijah. Matthew 11, 11, and then when you read at the verse 14, he said, Elijah is the one who can join the Baptist, and he's the greatest of all born by human beings. But the least, the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven is greater. So you, you, you are not expecting God to do anything. So if you are disappointed because God is not helping you, you are still labeling and having nothing. It's because your pastors are not telling you the truth. They are not telling you what you are supposed to know. That is why everywhere a Christian is the one who is suffering because he has been deceived. I want you to come back to your senses. Stay tuned to hear more. Amen.